This is the fourth part in my 1.17 Hardcore Minecraft world. In the last one, we managed to get a Fortune 2 Diamond Pickaxe, so of course that means in this one we're going to do some mining. We actually have a lot planned for this episode, and there's a project we start near the end of this video, which may or may not crash the world. So yeah, make sure you watch it at the end of the video to see that. Anyway, the first thing I do is run down this poorly built spiral staircase to get to my mine. And then I start a very long mining session. Wow. As the past version of myself goes mining, I just wanted to say thank you for all the support recently. It's actually been insane. We've gone from 1300 subs to almost 30,000 in just about 10 days, which is absolutely insane. Like that is, that is crazy. Um, yeah, so thank you for all the support. And if you aren't already subscribed, um, here's a graph. So that means you need to subscribe now. Okay, thanks. It didn't take me long to find my first vein of diamonds. So I brought out the Fortune 2 pickaxe. And I got 15 diamonds, which I think is below the expected value for Fortune 2, but um, I'll take it though. And it wasn't long until I found the next vein of diamonds. But this one was only a vein of two, and with Fortune 2, it only gave me three. I was already running out of space in my inventory, so I crafted blocks of coal and redstone, and also raw iron, which is a really nice feature of the update that not a lot of people talk about. It makes it so we can carry a lot more iron than normal, which is, you know, it's pretty nice. Not gonna, I'm not gonna complain about that. I found a lava pool and did the natural thing you do in a hardcore Minecraft world. I did some speed bridging. Why? It also led into a cave which I ran around in. But as cool as the cave looked, everywhere was a dead end, so I just went back to mining. And I immediately found another cave, which had a bunch of skeletons in it. And the cave also had some glowing ink sacks, so I threw them in my inventory and kept searching the cave. And I found a lot of mobs. Yeah, there were a lot, and that's when I run away. I mean, what do you expect? You know, there's four skeletons, there's zombies, there's creepers that could be hiding on the edges of the ravine. I mean, you know, I so I, I ran away. I decided to do some unnecessary parkour, but since Hypixel servers have been down for a while, I suck. And that's why you don't do lava parkour in a hardcore Minecraft world. I didn't learn my lesson though, because I took the same route back. Luckily, this time I didn't fall in any lava. Then I found a single diamond ore, which is a little disappointing, but it's not a problem because we have fortune 2, which means we should get a lot more than one diamond when we actually mine it. Oh, yeah, we also, we, we just got one from the fortune. Yeah. This is starting to get repetitive, but we found another vein of diamonds, diamond! and this time it was a three vein. Did you hear that? That was the sound of my Curse of Binding golden boots finally breaking, which is really nice because that means we're finally going to be able to wear a full set of diamond armor when we get out of the cave. There was a zombie spawner, but the chests were trash, so I just left. And on my way out, I found even more diamonds. This time it was a vein of 6, and with my Fortune 2 pickaxe, it gave me 11. At this point, I had more diamonds than I knew what to do with. I'm really rich! So I begin my journey back up to the surface. I couldn't find my original strip mine, so I thought the best thing to do would be to just dig straight up. And when I got to the surface, I had no idea where I was. I also didn't know where the coordinates to my base were, so I decided to just head to where I spawned and work my way backwards from there. And I did a lot of pointless parkour on my way over there. I mean, Hypixel's down, so where am I supposed to do parkour if not my hardcore world? Eventually I found the two things in the sky, which I remembered from spawning, so I knew I was really close to my spawn point. I tried to out parkour a spider getting over there, but of course I lost. And another piece of my armor broke. Ow. I think it was the chest plate this time. It's not a problem though, because when we get back to the base, we're gonna make a full set of diamond armor. It took a while, but I finally managed to get back to the base. Help. And I said hello to Subpig. 
I had a ton of ore that I needed to smelt, so I made nine furnaces. Fur, furni? Furnace? Fur, 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 furni. And then I enchanted my diamond sword. I got knockback 2 and sharpness 4, which is okay. And then I enchanted my diamond shovel, which may seem stupid, but that's just because it is. I only got efficiency 4 on it. Anyway, after hours of playing in this world, I was finally able to make a full set of diamond armor. And when I put it on, I realized I was completely blue. I put a wooden pickaxe in the enchanting table, and I saw that there was a silk touch enchantment in there. So I made another diamond pickaxe, enchanted it, and I got unbreaking 3, efficiency 4, and silk touch. Which is, y you know, pretty good. I then upgraded my diamond chest plate, and I got fire protection 3 and unbreaking 3. Which I was very happy about, considering what I had just done about an hour before. I was curious as to how well it protects from lava, so I ran to the nearest lava pit and jumped in. Call an ambulance! Call an ambulance! But not for me! Yeah, now I'm gonna feel a lot better about doing lava parkour. I made an anvil my first try because I never forget a crafting recipe. You're stupid. And at long last, named my name tag, and officially gave Subpig the title of... Subpig. I also placed a sign down by the cow pit, and I named it, wait for it, the cow pit. Wow. And I used the glowing ink sack I got to make it look just a little better. Hey cows, how are you guys doing? Good? Help me! Good. I replaced the sand in the pond with dirt, because I was about to start digging a giant hole underneath the pond, which is where my giant underground mansion will be. And if there's sand and water that falls, uh, this is what happens. Yeah, the water goes all the way down my spiral staircase and takes out every single torch I place. Then I realized that I have zero ability to plan ahead for the future, after noticing that the entrance to the base doesn't have a perfect center. So I took some time to destroy and then rebuild my entrance, so that the center of the entrance is a single block. Then I stood in the center, brought out my coordinates, and did some quick maths quick math. to figure out how far I needed to dig in each direction to make a circle of diameter 51 blocks. And once I went 25 blocks in each direction, I started to dig out the circle. And now my enchanted diamond shovel actually looks pretty nice. Unfortunately, because it didn't have unbreaking on it, the diamond shovel didn't last too long. Uh -huh. So I made another shovel, but I didn't have enough levels to enchant it, so I just did some mining with the unenchanted shovel. Yeah, it uh, wasn't very fun. Luckily I didn't have much left to do, so it really didn't take that long. And I had officially hollowed out the first quarter of the circle. Now I still had three quarters of the circle left to go, and I don't have an enchanted shovel anymore. So I went out in the night to fight some mobs, so I could hopefully get level 30 and enchant my shovel. When the night was up, I found myself at level 32, so I enchanted my diamond shovel and I got Unbreaking 3, Fortune 2, and Efficiency 3. Wow, wow, is very nice! I was happy with the enchantment, and I started working on digging out the second quarter of the circle. But I ran into a lot of problems. Uh, the circle didn't match up with what I had, huh? and it seemed like it didn't matter what I did, it just wouldn't fit. Yeah, I was stuck there just counting blocks over and over again for a while, until finally I realized that the quick maths I did earlier were completely wrong. Boom, quick maths. I had actually dug out one block too far on each side, so the circle wouldn't fit. After I sorted that out, the rest of the digging went a lot smoother. And pretty soon all I had left to do was dig around the chicken farm. But do you remember that time I was talking about replacing the sand with dirt in the pond? Yeah, I guess I missed some sand, and this was the result. I did use some big brain tactics to push the chicken back into the farm, but at this point the damage had already been done. 
I went above the chicken farm and fixed the hole that I made. And I took a look at the casualties. There were 21 of them. May they rest in peace. Oh my god! Moving forward, I was a lot more careful about digging out around the chicken farm, and it didn't take long for me to completely finish digging out the circle. So I spammed some torches on the ground, and then went around cleaning up some of the chicken. Pretty soon, my circle was devoid of chicken, which, spoiler alert, wasn't going to last much longer. Oh, there's a, there's a wandering trader here. Um, let's see. Yikes. I am so scared! Oh no, where did he go? He just disappeared. Anyway, now that I had more space underground, I thought it was only fit to expand the staircase and the logs of the entrance. And this is what the build looks like so far. Now, in the future episodes, I'll be digging out the base much deeper. But right now, since I don't have any mending, digging this hole is kind of just destroying my double-sided hoe. So that's where we're going to stop the base progress in this episode. And now we get into a project that just might have the potential to crash my computer. I left my base and found a zombie chillin' in the pond, and the zombie dropped a carrot. Now, this may not yet seem significant, but you're gonna have to trust me when I say it is very significant. This carrot is going places no other carrot has ever gone before, okay? This carrot will be the grand carrot of thousands of other carrots, because the next project we're working on is making a giant sub pig farm. So I leave the base and search for a new place to put the sub pig farm. I knew I was going to need a lot of fences, so I'm not proud to admit that I took part in deforesting this area. And I didn't even replant the saplings. How dare you! Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm kind of a terrible person. But I don't have time to stop and reflect on the impact that this deforestation has on climate change. I've got more important things to do, like make a giant pig farm. So that's what I'm gonna do. Eventually I find a nice place sufficiently far away from my base and start setting up. I make some spruce fences, and then I start making a perimeter. I found the first victim, I found the first volunteer, and used the lead to bring him inside the pen. And I found another one and did the same thing with him. Then I put some water in the ground and two pigs popped out. So now I had four pigs. I need to find bone meal so I can grow the carrots faster. So for a while I just look around for some skeletons. Boom! Bam! Bop! Bada bop boom! Pow! We're gonna have a sub pig for every member that's in our discord server. At the time I'm recording this we have 246 people in the discord and to make a pig we need to breed two pigs using two carrots. So that means we're gonna need two times 246 carrots which is 492 carrots. That's a lot of carrots and that's gonna be a lot of pigs. If you want to be the one responsible for making another sub pig in the farm, click the top link in the description to join my discord server and join a community of really cool people. Anyway, now we know what we need to do and that is get a lot of carrots. I got bored of trying to find skeletons, so I ran back to my base, making sure to do a lot of pointless parkour on our way over there. I checked the iron hoe enchantment, and luckily enough found fortune 3. So I made a diamond hoe, enchanted it, and got efficiency 4, fortune 3, and unbreaking 3. Almost the perfect diamond hoe. Then I did a little bit more skeleton farming. So you think you're better than me? Oh yeah? Well then bring it on. Ah! Oh, you guys are fighting? Okay, um, well, uh, I'll take the winner. Hey, nice, congrats. That's uh, unlucky, buddy. GG. By the time morning came around, I had 29 bones, so I converted it all to bone meal. I used the bone meal on the carrots, and then I tried using my Fortune 3 diamond hoe. Huh? Oh, wait, I guess I wasn't fully grown? And Fortune 3 definitely works. Oh, that gave me 7 carrots? I used all the bone meal pretty quickly, and now I had a decent amount of carrots, 
but not nearly enough. I spent an absurd length of time going AFK and then replanting the carrots, only to go AFK again and then replant the carrots. But finally, I had enough carrots to breed the pigs enough to make 246 pigs. One pig for every member in my Discord server. Again, if you want to join and be responsible for one of the pigs in this world, click the top link in the description to join the server. Before I was able to breed the pigs though, I went in my base and saw something very unfortunate. I saw all of the chicken had escaped the chicken farm, and it was all because of this one single enderman that stole one of the dirt blocks. So I took care of him. It made me so upset that I stole his eye and placed it in the barrel of betrayal. Oh wait, wh what else is in here? Oh, it's the 75% of you that aren't subscribed to my channel. So uh, if you want to get out of the barrel of betrayal, uh, <laughs> hit the subscribe button. You know, see what happens. Before we get to breeding the pigs, we really need to deal with all the chicken running around our base because I really don't want to get salmonella. So I destroy the rest of the chicken farm and begin construction on the new permanent chicken farm inside of the wall. I could hear the thunderstorm outside, and I'm not gonna lie, the atmosphere really made me feel like I had just given that Enderman a super villain backstory. So yeah, let's hope we don't see him again in a few episodes. I replaced the old cobblestone with smooth stone slabs. And I think it looks a lot better. It was now time to move the chicken back into the chicken farm, so I took out my seeds and brought them all into the farm. There wasn't really a good way of doing this, so I tried to just make the ones in the back push the ones in the front into the farm. Um, that only got so far though, so I eventually just chopped them in there and started swinging. Again, some people would think this is inhumane, but I think it's profitable. I realized that Subpick hasn't left his hole in a very long time, so I thought it would be nice to take him for a walk. And on our walk we ran into a creeper and a group of pillagers. I brought Subpig into the base for the very first time, and I chained him up and gave him one of the pillagers signs. I went back to the pig farm, and I started breeding. Every time I bred the pigs, I would need to wait 5 minutes for them to want to breed again, so I was kinda just running around doing some parkour while I waited. Pretty soon there were already a lot of pigs in the farm but still nowhere near how many they'll be in the future. So I just kept breeding. And there were there were a lot of pigs, you know? Uh, I don't know what I expected, but there were, there were so many pigs that it was getting hard to walk. Um, was I starting to regret this? Yes. Was it too far to go back? Also yes. Finally, I had given the last carrot, and so now there should be 246 pigs in this farm. If you want to be one of these pigs, which honestly, I don't, I don't think it, it looks very appealing anymore, um, but if you want to be one of them, then you can join the Discord, it's the top link in the description, and you can claim your very own pig. That's going to do it for this episode of Hardcore Minecraft. If you haven't already clicked off this video, it would mean the world if you could click like and subscribe if you aren't already. Videos like these take a very long time for me to make, so if you could do those things, that would really help me out. If you want to see these videos a little bit earlier, then make sure to click the post notification bell, so you'll be notified as soon as I upload the next one. Alright, thanks for watching. Peace.